I had a lot of people fall in love with the results of this sideboard makeover. One of these Art Deco sideboards is something that I've wanted to do for the longest time. I'd been looking out, but I could never find one for the right price. Well, this one happened to be the right price, just not in the best condition. It was a challenge. The curved glass on one side was missing and to replace the curved glass was more than I could possibly sell the sideboard for. So I had to get a little creative on how to replace the curved glass in the curved door. After I removed the hardware and took the doors off, I gave it a thorough cleaning with two rounds of Dixie Bell White Lightning, followed with a rinse off with some fresh water. This is a good time to take note of any damage and any repairs that your piece might need. The veneer on the top was in pretty good condition for its age, so I spent a couple of hours sanding the top, hoping to restore it. I went in with 120 grit on my orbital sander, making sure to keep it moving so I wouldn't burn through that veneer. I just went slowly, then I went over with a sanding pad with 120 grit into all the areas that I couldn't use my orbital sander on. The base was in such rough condition, I scuff sanded with 120 grit, then I mixed up some Bondo and filled in all of the dings and the dints, the little areas of chipped and missing veneer, and sanded that down once dry with 120 grit. I went to seal the veneer and unfortunately it was bubbling everywhere. I just slipped my palette knife under and ran it along and it just lifted. About 60% of it came up pretty easily but the rest of it was stuck. Rather than go the iron and the towel method I just went in with 80 grit on my orbital sander and sanded straight through it. For me personally I just don't have the patience to stand there with the hot iron and a wet towel to remove the veneer and hope that it's going to lift sometime in a timely manner. I would rather go in with 80 grit with my orbital sander and just sand straight through it. I'm using my HVLP pneumatic spray gun to spray two coats of grey primer. The grey primer is a better base colour for a darker colour that I'm eventually going to paint the sideboard.
The top wasn't in the best shape from where the veneer had been removed so I went in with a slurry mix of timber filler and I did a skim coat over the whole top and then sanded it with 180 grit. I then went in with another coat of grey primer to seal all of the areas that were exposed from sanding again. I followed the grey primer up with this gorgeous olive green colour. It's Mangrove by Julux. I did two coats of just the mangrove and then I went in with two coats of the mangrove mixed with polyurethane. The first coat I did about 50% polyurethane with 50% mangrove and then the second coat I did about 10% mangrove with 90% water-based polyurethane. I really thought the next step was going to be an easy one. I just thought that I would be able to bend some wood and slip it into that door and there'd be no problem. Boy was I delusional. It took me three attempts to get the door right before I managed to nail it. So originally when I picked up the sideboard I had an idea to put radio weave inside the door frame. I thought that would be a nice alternative to the glass that was missing. So I cut some to size and I soaked it in the bathtub for about 20 minutes. This softened the radio weave and made it more malleable. While the radio weave was still wet, I laid it on the inside of the door frame, making sure that the weave was running straight. I then went in with my pneumatic staple gun and stapled it in. The only problem was that I only had a small lip there to staple it onto. Attaching the radio weave to the actual door frame on the inside wasn't really an option. You could see that lip from the outside, so there wasn't really anywhere for me to attach some trim on the outside to hide that lip. I wanted to have that radio weave nice and tight and remove all those wrinkles for a nice professional look. So as I'm stapling it in, I'm pulling it tight on the other end. But as I'm pulling it tight, the radio weave is starting to break because of that small recessed lip and the angle that the radio weave has to go into. I persevered though, Got the whole door done before I admitted defeat and went on to my next option. I had that glass panel so I managed to get the measurement from the curve of the glass with a fabric tape measure. Toddled off to Bunnings and I got some 3mm MDF. I figured for sure I would be able to bend this. I've bent so much wood in my time unintentionally it's unbelievable. I laid it out in the sun hoping it would curve over that glass from the heat but it didn't budge. Attempt three, time to make a jig. To get the curve for the jig, I simply used the door as a template and I traced around it on a piece of scrap timber. I used one for each end. I saturated the piece of ply to make it easier to manipulate into the shape that I wanted. I cut those two curved panels out with my jigsaw and then I attached some blocks to each end and held that upright into place. Using two straight edges, I slowly clamped down the ply panel onto that jig. Because the ply panel was already wet, it was very easy to manipulate it into the shape that I needed. Once I'd clamped it down nice and hard into that jig, I left it for the day to dry. Once it was completely dry, I removed it from the jig and put it into the door for a dry fit. Both door frames had a slightly different curve and the top was different to the bottom curve. So I had to create four different separate pieces from each curve. Once I was 100% happy with the fit, I went over the ply panel with some tan paint to give a base colour for the radio weave. Once the paint was dry, I went over with a nice generous coating of wood glue and allowed that to dry slightly. I faced a couple of challenges. I couldn't just lay the wrinkly radio weave down and hope that the wrinkles come out of it. I couldn't put any pressure on it to lay it down because that would have flattened the panel. So what I did was I went over with my iron and some baking paper and I just ironed it on and that fused the radio weave to the door panel. There was some radio weave overhang from that ply panel so I simply used a sanding block and sanded the edge off. Wood glue into that rebated edge and then I put my radio weave panel in. 
I did use my brad nailer to put a few brad nails in that I didn't film. It's about at this point that I felt immense relief. I could see that the end was in sight. That tap, tap, and in she goes, and it fits like a glove, and I was over the moon. <laughs> my elation was very short-lived. I did both panels, and it was all good. Everything was done, and one of them failed. So I popped the panel out, and I used some liquid nails to try and hold it back in but even then it wouldn't still hold into place and it just popped back out. I think where I must have gone wrong with the one that failed is that I had my panel about one or two mil too big for the door frame so it wouldn't really stay into place and that's where it was popping out. I was lucky enough to saw a thinner piece of ply from an old backing of a mirror that was more easily to manipulate than the original one had been. There were still a couple of original nails in place, so I used those as well as some brad nails. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that when I take something out, it never goes back in the same. And this was no exception. I did have to trim a tiny bit off each edge of these trim pieces just so it would fit back into place. One of the joints on the door panel had opened up slightly, so I re-glued it back together and using my ratchet straps, I forced the join back closed and I left it for a few days until it was dry. That kept it into shape. And now for the final challenge on this piece. The drawer slides had been worn away from years of coming in and out. One of the drawer slides had worn down particularly heavy. It was almost to the base. I started this repair by taking a 3mm drill bit and my drill and I did a row of holes all along that base of the side that had worn down the most. I did a coating of glue onto the side and then pushed it down into the holes that I drilled. I then inserted the skewers, gave them a quick trim and then hammered them down more forcibly into the holes. I allowed it to fully dry before I moved on to the next step. Once the skewers were dry the next day, I came back and I trimmed them down to a more manageable height. For me personally, I find the skewers a better option over nails. The skewers can be easily sanded down if I'm a little high, whereas if I hammer it in further once I've applied the bondo because I've gone too high, I find that you might crack the bondo and undermine the join. A skewer will also wear naturally with the timber of the drawer as it moves in and out, whereas a nail will still protrude out because the timber's worn away on the outside but the nail will still stick out and that will eventually gouge in back into the drawer frame. After mixing some Bondo, I applied a generous coating over those skewers along that draw base side. I wasn't worried if I was making a mess or how much I was putting on, I just wanted to coat them.
Once it was starting to dry slightly, I went in with a wet glove and I pushed that bondo, making sure that I had a good adhesion right onto those skewers and that draw base. I did two layers of the bondo, making sure that I had a good coverage and a nice height to bring down. I waited to the following day before I decided to sand. I wanted to make sure that the Bondo had cured fully and it was rock hard. Using a piece of timber for height reference, I sanded that builder's bog down flat until I hit that timber. I wanted to reinforce that new side that I'd built up so I was lucky enough to have a little bit of timber on hand that was the right thickness that I needed. I simply glued it into place and then went in with my brad nailer and stapled it in. Then once everything was dry, I then went over with a skim coat of Bondo just to neaten everything up and that little join there and that tiny little back corner. For the other side, it was only slightly worn away at the back. So this was a much easier process. Now unfortunately on the next bit I forgot to press record on the camera but what I did was I went in with a wash and completely covered over that bondo and that whole drawer slide to make it blend better. I then followed that up with a bit of stenciling to blend that even more and you could hardly even see it. Replacing the drawer side was an option, but unfortunately the dovetails are a little bit above my skill set at the moment. So I'm going to practice those some more before I would even attempt to do that and on sell a piece that I'd done those two. I had originally intended to put brass hardware on and I drilled for new knobs and new drop pulls. Fortunately I changed my mind once I put them on, they weren't quite the right fit for this piece. 
I had also applied some gold rub and buff to the hinges to tie that in with the new gold brass hardware, but that didn't work either, so I removed that with a bit of white spirits. You can also use mineral spirits. The bronze hardware change was definitely a great choice on this one. I'm absolutely loving this. It's pulled it all together beautifully. That radio weave is so gorgeous and I love the fact that it's got the solid backing and that the dirt and dust can't get through it inside to the cupboard. For the shelves inside the cupboard I had removed them and I sanded them back to natural and I just put on a water-based polyurethane to seal them and they're gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for joining me on probably one of my most challenging pieces. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I would love to know what you think of this crazy makeover in the comments. Let me know.